So you got yourself locked up in a prison cage with no hope of escaping. Let me guess. You picked a fight with one of the many power tripping factions in the area. You decided to start your mining operation in unallied faction territory. You were minding your own business while being a non-human alien species, robot cyborg, or God forbid, a female. Well, however you got yourself imprisoned in this cage, I'm here to help you break out. Hi, my name is Nurse and this is how to escape from prison. Disclaimer, all instructions in this video are meant to help you escape prison in Kenshi, a video game, and is by no means here to help you or anyone for that matter escape incarceration in the real world. Please do not attempt any steps seen in this video for the purposes of escaping any official holding facility. Doing so will result in disappointment, regret, and amusement on my behalf. How to escape prison in Kenshi. Step one, check yourself. It's important to check on your overall health before you attempt your escape from prison. I'm going to take a guess that you were likely brutalized before your detainers slapped cuffs on you. Luckily, you're more valuable alive as a slave than a corpse, which is why you were patched up with crude medical supplies before you had a chance to bleed out. Hopefully, you still have both arms and legs after they beat the ever-living fuck out of you. Losing an arm or a leg will cripple you and can make your escape that much more difficult. Difficult. Pro tip, you can run a lot faster with two legs than with one. Wow, who knew? Whatever your physical circumstances may be, you'll soon wake from your recovery coma, bounded by iron shackles inside of a cramped cage, which leads us to step two, understand your surroundings. How many guards are there? Where is the exit? How far is the prison from the town entrance? All these questions can be answered by simply taking the time to understand your surroundings. Successfully escaping from prison depends almost entirely on how well you know your surrounding environment. An observant prisoner will be able to navigate out of the prison with ease by simply paying attention to important details like time of day, guard shift rotation, and exit location. An oblivious prisoner might attempt to pick the lock of their cage and escape only to get fucked at the exit door by the guards. Regardless of how you choose to go about understanding your surroundings. Learning from experience through trial and error is the best option, bringing us to Step 3. Never give up. After countless failed attempts to escape imprisonment, I can understand wanting to end it all with lethal doses of ethanol. But wait, don't give up. Just because you're still in prison doesn't mean you can't learn new things. Little do you know, all those beatings you received while trying to escape has increased your pain threshold and, in the process, improved your endurance skill, allowing you to take on more abuse than ever before. Don't forget about all of those hours you put into lock picking out of your cage. Your skilled hands can now pick open almost any lock, including the locks of high-level chests, doors, and even other cages. Pro tip, starting a prison riot could be an effective strategy in your escape, as the confusion may divert attention away from yourself, thus enabling a path out of the prison, bringing you closer to freedom them or not. Your time in the hole has also increased your sneaking skill. Before, any attempts at stealth only resulted in getting your shit kicked in. But now, you've learned to tiptoe around without alerting the guards. Well, some of the guards. By never giving up, you too can learn from past failures and acquire new skills in prison. But the matter of escaping the prison still stands, so it's important to follow. Step 4. Try a new strategy. Try to escape during the day? Try a new strategy and sneak out at night while everyone is asleep. Tried sneaking out at night but got caught by the guards at the gate? Try disguising yourself as one of the guards and walk right out if and when your plan fails and it will. Get creative and try a new strategy. You've got nothing to lose. No, really. There is nothing you could possibly lose. Let's go over the four steps so that you can improve your chances of escaping prison. Step 1. Check yourself. Step 2. Understand your surroundings. Step 3. Never give up. And finally, step 4. Try a new strategy. One way to remember all four steps that I recommend is by using this handy acronym. C***t. Firmly grasping C***t and its teachings will help those of you stuck in a cell, or who I like to call incels.
Say hello to Brad. Brad lives a normal post-apocalyptic life here in the wasteland, which isn't saying much. Still, Brad is happy to be able to feed his family and most of all, come home to his wife, PleasureBot 2. Every day, Brad kisses his wife goodbye before he ventures off to mine and sell iron ore. Today, Brad has found a large iron deposit located further away from his normal spot. Overwhelmed by excitement from discovering such a lucrative spot, Brad begins mining away. However, Brad fails to hear the footsteps of a large Holy Nation squad approaching him from behind. Unfortunately for Brad, the Holy Nation don't like outsiders mining in their sacred territory, so they quickly and gently apprehend him. Brad now finds himself in a Holy Nation prison cage, beaten unconscious but alive. Can Brad make it out before he is forced into a life of servitude? Let's see and find out if Brad knows a thing or two about c Brad has woken up from his recovery coma and immediately goes for the lock. After picking at the lock for a few hours, he succeeds and escapes. The guards see Brad trying to escape and decide to give him a taste of Holy Nation hospitality. With less limbs than he had before, Brad is back in his cage. Can you guess what Brad did wrong? A. Rebelled against his oppressors B. Failed to check himself and understand his surroundings C. Called the guards fat Correct! The answer is B. Brad failed to check himself and take the time to understand his surroundings. If he had simply followed steps 1 and 2, Brad would have realized that his body was far too weak to endure any more abuse. Risking a fight with the guards would have been enough to tear his limbs apart, which was something Brad learned the hard way. He also failed to understand his surroundings. If he did, he would have been more aware of the number of guards in the area. Many days passed and Brad was still imprisoned. His body had become accustomed to the many beatings he received at the sadistic hands of his jailers. His lock picking skill was so high, he could pick the locks open of five other prisoners in the jail at the same time. His sneaking ability was so great that he could crawl right under the noses of the guards, slithering across the floor like some deformed snake. Brad had demonstrated step number three, never give up. The thought of returning to his wife, Pleasure Bot 2, was burned into Brad's mind. He was determined to do whatever it took to get back home to it, er, her. At this point, Brad was no stranger to failure. He tried to escape many times, only to be stopped at the gate by even more guards. He tried sneaking out to hide in a storehouse, only to be caught by a guard inside. He tried staging a diversion by freeing all of the prisoners, in hopes that the guards wouldn't possibly be able to catch them all. They could. He even tried dressing like a guard by wearing stolen armor pieces, but they saw right through his disguise. It was time to utilize step four. Try a new strategy. Brad had come up with a new plan. He was going to hire a band of mercenaries to help him escape. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. How was he going to do that from the inside? By sneaking out at night when most of the guards were asleep, stealing valuable items from their lockers, hauling all of the loot on his back, crawl across town with his newfound upper body strength into a bar, and sell the stolen goods to the bartender. With cash in hand, Brad was ready to enact his escape plan. He was going to hire the mercenaries at the bar to attack the guards at the front gate, while he crawled away past all of the fighting through the front gate towards freedom. But there was a problem. These mercenaries had a hiring fee that cost more than Brad expected. He couldn't afford to pay the mercenaries, and so his plan had fallen through. It wasn't looking good for Brad at this point. The sun was coming up, and that meant more people and more guards to worry about. Brad was desperate. He needed a new plan, fast. Time was running out and his options were limited. Among those at the bar, there was one person that Brad hadn't spoken to. They were willing to hear Brad out and listen to his story. Perhaps it was the allure of money, impaired judgment, or the sight of Brad himself. But this stranger offered a price Brad could afford. What unfolded next? was the greatest prison break in all of recorded history. Almost immediately after being hired, the stranger hoisted Brad over their shoulder, stumbled out of the bar towards the front gate and walked past the guards. 
Brad was free. By demonstrating the four steps of he successfully escaped prison and was now on his way back home, carried by some stranger he met at a bar. Brad could hardly wait to see his wife again. When Brad arrived back at his hometown, he crawled towards his home, opened the front door to his house and saw his wife in the arms of Chadbot.